I'm live. Double checking my uh, my sound is good. I'm not getting a a yes. Thumbs up. Can you hear me? No. Maybe. <laughs> Gotta make sure that you can hear me, or else <laughs> it'd be silence for you know an hour. So yes, okay, good. All right, welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish, and I'm coming to you. It's a little bit after nine today. I was uh, trying to figure out where I was in this project. It's been a really eventful week. Uh, so um, it's good to get back, but I've had a lot going on. Uh, Julia turned four this week. So we had a family party on Sunday. And of course, we invited just like one other couple and their and their children over. But somehow that meant we really just had to clean a lot. And so <laughs> lots of work. I wanted to make it special and then got ready for Julia's class party yesterday. So uh, and then crazy enough, we're also going to be renovating um, our second floor so that guests can have somewhere to stay and it'd be nice. So just a little paint and, and furniture and things, but uh, it's a lot. So that's what I've been up to this week. And so I was like, where was I on this project? Uh, so I've got everything set back up um, and we're gonna be again, working on upgrading rails five to six. If you missed last week, um, we got quite a bit, quite a bit done. Uh, just now it's really trying to get that Capybara web kit to work, which um, I'm on a new, newer machine to me, and so that was not all set up. Uh, actually, uh, never really installed Qt and QMake and all that jazz on uh, on a Mac machine. So thank you again for everyone helping me uh, navigate that. And I think we're pretty close. Uh, so that is where we're going to pick up today. I do want to do a little plug. Um, I'm actually wearing my sweatshirt. I don't know if you can see Stride. Woo, Stride, we're gonna be getting some new swag. Uh, there we go. Um, is hiring. Uh, and so I will be putting the link into the um, notes down below. Um, and then also if you're on my email list, you just got an email with the link and to look for it there. I will also probably email it again next week. Um, they are hiring and they're especially hiring in a couple of locations. So I don't know if I've, I, if any of you are in Chicago or know of people in Chicago, they're really looking for folks there, as well as New York and Charlotte. That's where I am. So I uh, thank you. Um, if anybody wants to pop on, I will look at my uh, tech uh, at uh, chat and talk to you. And you know, uh, thanks for any help or just any questions you might have. Feel free to put that into the chat. So I'm going to just get started because um, I really would like to, to wrap up um, around 10 or so uh, Eastern time. So I am, again, uh, going to be adding another day, uh, a morning time, if you're more of a morning person or if uh, you are in Europe because this is like crazy time for you there. Um, and I know I have some people on my email list from there. So, okay, I'm going to have a little glass of wine just to... Calm down a little. I had a little happy hour with the uh, Stride folks today. Finishing that off. All right. Here we go. So this is the very last command that I ran. Um, and it was running as we were wrapping up last week. And so this was, uh, let me get up the, um, the instructions here. Uh, so this is the homebrew instructions on how to get um, the uh, the Qt installed correctly um, with everything that you need with uh, QMake and everything as well because we were hitting errors last time. Uh, so here, this is the last one I did. So then run the setup. Okay, let's let's go ahead and run the setup. Oh wait, wait, wait! No, don't do that. <laughs> I just wanted to show you that that was the last command. Let's copy. <laughs> Live coding. It's exciting. Okay. Um, la, la, la. Let's see what. Am I not in the right spot? 
go and go path. Oh, I probably am supposed to replace that with something. Run the setup. Go and oh, that's right. Installing go. Install go. Go and path. Um, enlarge the font size on the browser. I know. I, I was actually in a meeting today with somebody who had a large, nice large screen and shared the whole screen. So I, I do feel your pain. So do let me know if it is not um, not big enough. Oh, I have some. I was on my uh, private chat looking there. Do, do, do. Hello. Hello, Fernando. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Uh, I hope I, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. You just joined, or at least you're just posting. So um, I will show you a little thing. Hello. Um, so, uh, yes, very eventful week. Uh, birthday parties for my now four-year-old little girl. So um, it's been a lot. And then we're also, like, managing some some small home renovations. Uh, some painting is going to be happening next week. Um, buying furniture for a completely empty room now that is going to be our guest room. We'll have guests at the end of May. So uh, I hope you're doing great too. So, uh, and hi to uh, Brian as well. Thank you for letting me know you can hear me. All right, now I'm back on the good chat. All right, so we're installing go. So then it's like go and path bin. Okay, so. Uh, where's go? Can I just do where go? Go path. No. Go, go path. No. It's just says that right here. Go path. Uh Modules file, which isn't present. Your go path should be. Da, 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 da. Thank you, Brian. Yes, I'm just trying. It's 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 uh just trying to get the QT up and running. All right, so. Um, so if we try. I think we're. No. Oh, wait. Um, fail to run. And it's not found at any point. It should go help modules. Did it not do? If we go back up here. Because I ran. This one, QT command, run the setup. Sure seems like it would, maybe it's just this, maybe that's my problem. Why is there? Thank you, Brian. So, okay, so he is suggesting pound ampersand ampersand ls dash a h question mark. <laughs> Do you mean um, where am I? I'm home. No. Just to see your working directories and files.
just LS work with, yeah. There's go. Maybe I could just CD into go. There's bin. So if we just run and And we went then. Oh, right. Oh, I know how to ls dash a, sorry. <laughs> ls dash a is where he's going. So here we go. We have Qt set up. Oh, good. Okay, there it is. Um, uh, all right, let me take this off. Um, I should go into the source directory. Not here. <laughs> it's right here. I can't just run Qt setup. Not tabbing for me. I'm going to go for it. No, okay, into the source. CD out of here. Where am I? From the wiki. Oh, do you mean the source directory? I don't know that I have a source. No. Do you mean where the, where the, um, so uh, let me show Brian's next thing. Um, oh, well then make one. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll, we'll do that, make. Uh, Okay, and then we're gonna make, so I'll have to remove that other one from just the home directory there. I have this too far back. All right, that's gonna run. I don't think it took too long last time I ran it. We'll see what that has. Um, is there a link to the wiki? Yes, here we go. I put that in the chat now and I'll show this one. So that's this, this, this page that we found last week, um, that to install the homebrew version, I don't need iOS and Android support of Qt. So these days it needs Xcode, Qt, and Go. Um, so, and Brian also had to do this for his work a couple weeks. Um, you has to do, oh no, you have to do it. So, <laughs> Rails five for six. Uh, yeah, so you'll see if you have like your environment all set up, it probably won't be as difficult. This this is a new computer for me. Um, I guess I did it then. Um, I don't know that it did it. Hmm. Why not? Binary in there. So now, okay, so hello from Uruguay. I, I, I'm just going to post it here, the hi from Uruguay. Um, 
I'm probably going to mispronounce it, <laughs> but welcome. Um, all right, so now Brian is saying, if you go into the bin directory in Go, back, back here, because I ran this in source, um, Or binary there. I don't see anything more. As I was saying, if you have your um, if you go to the bin directory and go, it's not. It didn't seem. It didn't seem to do it. All right, let's try again. Um, copy this. It just doesn't want to do it. I just want some. I'm just curious. No, it's still, this is the year. Reminder of where we were last week, um, that it's QT WebKit that we're trying to, ins to install. It's separate. So we're now trying to get Go to install it. Um, and then, uh, okay. Brian is saying, get clone repo name. the repo name for what exactly this get this let's see Getting the tags. Hey Brian, which uh, which repo name? You're you're saying that that Go expects my my uh, my my uh, app to be in um in in SRC. I have it in in sites. That's just where I put mine. Oh, sorry, I don't want to print it. Um. put mine in sites. So that's where it is if I get out of it. And then I run, I have a little here. This. No, it's like, it's already like, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so Brian uh, is saying, yeah, I was a little too quick on that, but testing it myself locally. Um, it's interesting that it's, uh, I guess let's, let's parse through. Okay, interesting. I have done nothing to go. So yeah, so it says Golang cares about its path and specifically the Golang environmental variables it uses. Then can I change that? The other option, we could just go back down to QT 5.0. No, I couldn't. I tried QT 5.5 and it's just not there anymore. So we have to, we have to go forward on this, this route. Um, but for those of you who are joining in new, I'll give a little recap of the last two weeks. Um, that, 
Uh, I guess. Crazy going on. Um, I, the the ask was to show the environmental variables here real quick. Um, there's Python. There's RVM. That's it. I think of anything. Um, sorry, I am getting distracted. And so, um, so yeah, so we, um, are, are slowly adding back gems. Basically, um, the, the, one of the first, uh, folks who came on had just done this upgrade and said, you know, he, when he was, had so many like conflicts between gems and versions, he just took everything out and put in rails and got rails, to the, you know, the, version of Rails you want to sort of really start upgrading to. Um, and now we're slowly adding them back. And so I got through a lot of them and now I'm trying to get to Capybara WebKit because I really do enjoy, um, you know, uh, those sort of feature tests that RSpec has. And I have quite a few of them. That's really most of my tests <laughs> um, on this. Um, so it's the Ruby Thursday site. So it's, you know, a fairly basic blog. Um, I actually have some uh, e-commerce stuff in there that I'm just going to pull out. Um, so it should be, once we get the bare bones of it back going, um, it should be pretty easy. It's just this, this um, uh, getting QT actually is, is now like been the hardest issue. Um, and so I'm certainly thankful <laughs> for some uh, insight into uh, getting this GoLang thing going. Let's let's maybe look more um, at the actual um, command. Um, so we installed Go. And then clone the repo. So that was the repo. So you know what, what maybe what we'll do, because it doesn't seem to want to go into source, but maybe that's because it feels like it's there. But let's go back up. It's here. Let's remove go from here. Badoo. Go directory not empty. Permission denied. How many of that did it do? All of them? <laughs> Wait. Um, do you, do you still do sudo on a, a Mac? Oh. This, I don't have that memorized. <laughs> this is my Stride computer that um, I use often, but um, not in a minute. Uh, I have the little thumbprint guy. Um, okay. Let's see. Oh, I forgot to, some of it's all caps and some of it's not. Oh, it's still there.
Oh. Now it's doing it. Okay. Now it's gone. Okay. And now in SRC, let's try. Okay. Uh, Brian does have an update here. It worked for me. Works on my machine. <laughs> Thanks. Um, that is the sweetest little koala. I think. I think you know. I've always just kind of used my face um, on YouTube, but. Although I guess if I was logged in as Ruby Thursday, it'd be the, the, the uh, Ruby, but um, okay. So now let's try to add, let's see if it's pretty close in here, here. Okay. Now it's in here. Let's see if that helps. So yes, Brian, so if you have lots of conflicts, <laughs> I don't know about a big project. I feel like a small project that's not that risky. Um, I did uh, back in December work on upgrading um, and that wasn't even all the way to six. Um, I think that was, like just five one to five two, um, but it was a big, um, you know, mostly uh, API, um, and uh, but it was using. Oh, it stopped. Good. Okay. Um, and I did not do that, um, but I didn't have as many like mer like conflicts uh, going on, and I think that was because it was. Um, It, it, it all along had been updated a little bit. Um, so let's see, the next step, what was the next step? Run the setup. So do I copy this whole thing? Uh, so go and go path. Um, yeah, I think five to six will be, it'll be hard. But the hardest I ever did was three to four. I thought four to five wasn't so bad. Um, uh, that uh, Brian is saying, you know, he, he did four to five. Um, but uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, I feel like I'm not running this correctly. Go and go path. Hmm. Let's not like go. Is in here, even though I run this command. What's downloading? Okay. What does it do? It's go is downloading these things. I don't have a go path. So I'm sorry, just looking. Yeah. The recipe. So I downloaded these things and it put in the recipe. Okay. And how do you run? So should I look up running a um got it. Okay, so go modules. It's similar to how Bundler will cache gems locally, so it doesn't need to grab them from the remote. Great. 
So I just need to figure out this go path. Like, where is that? <laughs> uh, go path environment is needed. Uh, no, let's see. Go, I guess we go path, go get. Go path environmental variable. It can really be anywhere. Where do we think this is? Additional help topics. Go, oh, so go help, go path. Um. Okay. So Brian is saying it should be there, except I just deleted that. <laughs> okay, so I think I messed up there. I think now I'm understanding. Um, although Go is here. That's not uninstalled. Um, Oh, there it is. It's there. And so, um, so just echo. No. I've forgotten how to do that. Um, oh, uh, export. Yeah, I tried Echo. I don't think Echo is working. I think it's it's uh, export. There we go. All right. And then what were we supposed to do? <laughs> go and go path. So now can we just run that? I feel like they're telling us to run exactly that. Mod. So do we go go path? Oh. No. Oh. <sighs> So now we need to be, okay. Things he needs to be in the QA, the, uh, do you mean? No. The go.mod file. Um, Uh, okay, so here it is. Um, mm, Go command download behavior can be configured. 
Okay. Um, because he's saying to looking for the go dot mel. Well, well, how do we? Okay. <laughs> uh, go issues. Uh, uh, yeah, no, that's, I mean, from terminal. Uh, it has issues with getting, okay, so Brian is saying Go often has issues with getting private repos in GitHub. But I feel like we ran, um, uh, oh, back here. Did I do things on here? No, I should just keep to one terminal here. Um, right, I did this. So it's downloading. We were in source. And it downloaded this. Or at least it printed it. Um, okay, Brian. Okay, the one thing about, uh, I'll try this out here. Um, I'm using StreamYard to uh, look at your uh, comments and um, they don't let me copy paste. Um, oh, I see. Legal option. Um, Why don't we just find a uh, dash name? And a go dot mod. Okay. Okay. I think we found enough. Um, so there's a user local, right? So that is different if we um, look at here, right? So let's export um, go path as user local go 
right? User local go. And then that and that source, is that where I'm supposed to be uh, adding the GitHub stuff? Ah, okay. You ran the, um, Brian's asked me to, um, What? I just thought. You just told me it was there. Um, uh, I can run this again. Just see if you want to look here. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I changed it. Uh, but that seems to be even worse. But we just saw. Well, here's the here's the error that it was. I found a current directory or any parent directory seco. But we went and I looked for go.mod. Okay. All right, we can put it back the way it was. Um, where was that? So if we do that, and again, so that's it. So if this is our go path, this is the air. I'm gonna let it sit for a minute. I'm gonna have a little drink. All right. I have a feeling this is going to be my Friday night, too. <laughs> uh, how interesting. You know, when I've, when I've helped um, people in the past get, you know, um, their environment set up, um, you know what we could do? I, I, I lost my train of thought, but it, it was diff there was always this like one thing that wasn't working right. But you know what might be interesting is if this is just not working and painful and Go is not working, then maybe it's time to go ahead and Dockerize um, the the app. And, and even though I'm working on a Mac machine to go ahead and put it into a Linux uh, Docker box that I'm like a little bit more familiar with. And I think that Qt might um, be a little more friendly with. Um, <laughs> Webpacker is disappointing. It is. Um, this Webpack thing or, well, Webpacker or um, I guess Capybara Webpack, right? what I'm trying to do. Um, so, you know, or I install Selenium um, is the other option. So yeah, I think at this point, um, you know, you sort of have to eventually time box and say, okay, um, you know, I'm not super familiar with Go. Thank you, Brian, for all your help. Um, and, you know, if, if something comes up, let me know. But I think um, the options in moving to this newer computer, I, I could go and pull out my old computer <laughs> and, you know, commit what I've got going on and, and just see if, if it'll work better because everything is already set up. Um, 
that's an option too. Um, it's uh, just to keep keep moving on it. Um, and uh, so those are what three three options, three options. So one is try to Dockerize this thing, which uh, you know I think might be might be hard. Um, uh, oh, as our sharing Webpacker uh, is harder. Let me let me post this. Sorry. Um, Zara just is um, uh, sharing that you, uh, well, I don't think you have to use, that's a good, a good thing to look into when we're, we're ready for it. But um, uh, so he's, uh, a simple bootstrap theme into rail six and end up downgraded back to five using sprockets. It's too hard in Webpacker. Is that what um, I currently have? Let's look. I don't remember. Um, I don't think I've gotten that far. Um, and what's going to actually, um, make it into the final cut here. All right. So the, the, to, to recap the three, um, the three options I think I've, I've come up with is one to Dockerize, but I feel like that's like a whole other ball of fun. Uh, that I was maybe going to do later. Um, uh, two is try Selenium out. Um, it'll be a little slower. I'm um, not sure how it's going to go on this computer. Uh, I don't even have Firefox on this computer right now. So, um, uh, I mean, probably not that hard. Um, might be worth worth trying out. Third is that next week I come back with my old computer. Uh, just, you know, uh, commit what I've got, pull everything onto that computer, uh, and because that one is is – has been set up before to work on this particular app. Uh, and it's Ubuntu. It's not, it's not uh, OS X. Um, just, just to keep moving because, uh, you know, you have goals, uh, but we didn't get to ours today of actually running anything. We're still caught up in, the, in this QT um, uh, uh, what is the, even the name of it? Was the, the um, QT make, uh, it was, um, it's up to, <sighs> QT web kit is no longer included. Um, And it can't find it. Um, Brian has also had the experience of uh, Rails and Docker. <laughs> Is a headache in production when uh, K8's into the mix? Oh no. Um, yeah, and I and I feel like you need to hold like dedicated, um, like dedicated folks to work on that part, right? It's not. It's not. Um, it's a lot to to manage um, both developing like features in the app and then also the infrastructure of Kate's. Uh, and this is just a little blog site. Um, but uh, yeah, um, so an exciting it's what <laughs> it's one of those coding days, coding I guess just an hour we've done we've been going a little less um, that uh, you kind of end up where you started. So that's, that's the, um, um, <laughs> I haven't even ran the migrations yet, Brian. <laughs> I don't even know if Postgres is set up correctly. Um, I, I've had post, did I have, yeah, no, I've done, I have another project on this computer using Postgres. So I, I feel like a little better about that, but, 
uh, I think I'm going to bring on good old Ubuntu. And uh, um, that's too hard to do midstream. So it's another stream, um, another live coding session. So uh, unless folks have any other questions, um, I'm going to wrap up for this evening. And I'm going to uh, commit what I have and push it. and. Um, I will probably give it a go ahead. Um, uh, maybe I'll just record locally um, and uh, maybe just uh, to get us a little further, uh, not on the Capybara WebKit issue. Uh, so we can get onto new issues at least next week. So, um, uh, oh, okay. As, uh, Zara has a question. Um, Oh yeah, we. I've never. So the question is, I don't want to use device default views. Can I use device functionality on my own custom login view? Uh, yeah, I have hardly ever used the um, the stuff that came with device. Uh, let me see if I recall um, where we are in this one. Um, oh, this one doesn't have a login. <laughs> <laughs> this this site, uh, you don't log in. It's not a membership site. Um, I have uh, active admin uh, that I log into uh, to like post things. Um, but uh, you know what I could do? I could probably, um, I'm gonna do this on the browser down below to make sure I can get to a good page. Um, but I can share. Um, some uh, of the uh, project that we did, Gig Tilt. Um, and um, what did I call that? Yes, Plaid. Yeah, okay. Let me see if I can get to the right spot and then I'll pull this up. Um, right, okay. All right, let me pull this up. So I think Devise has um, some docs on this. I'd have to look it up. But basically, um, I called it frozen heat. I was in a, it's such a long story. But anyway, um, I'm going with little cutesy names for my repos. Uh, with a TV show named Castle, if anybody's ever like watched that. It's been years. All right, so, but here you can have, um, I believe the, the gem looks to see if you have a device uh, view folder in your views. And that's where you can um, have the same, I think there's actually like even a generator that probably will do this for you. I'd have to look at device. Um, I don't remember like ever making those. Um, uh, right, exactly. You can generate the Rails um, device views and it makes that folder for you. And um, then you can, uh, there's other like other information here. Um, like on how to do that. So then, then you go in and you, uh, oh, sorry. Then you can go in and especially uh, registrations, right? Um, there's new. Uh, and so basically you go in and you see some of the templated stuff. Um, it has like device error messages. It has labels, email fields, password field. It has, um, all of this kind of boilerplate for you and you add in your divs and your classes or if you're, um, uh, you know, this is basic HTML, but if you're writing in Haml or um, uh, I just uh, worked on a project with Vue, which is JavaScript, um, but templated. So, you know, you have all that in there as well. So, um, uh, it has like a submit and then you can obviously change the name of it. So, so all of this, um, uh, and then if you, you called it not user, I think we called it vendor, 
was our main uh, devise model. Um, so you, you know, we change things like that if you didn't say user, if you use member, um, that kind of stuff. So, um, but yeah, it's easy enough to, to edit those. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, we, I've never, yeah, my lovely husband is the designer when we do projects together, uh, and he hands me the big old HTML file and I, I integrate it with what's already there. So um, we have basic basic views on this project, um, as well as uh, in the gig tilt one as well. So thanks for the question. All right, I am going to go ahead and, and wrap it up. Um, uh, please do join me next week. Um, uh, I will not begin the the two like I'm going to start a Tuesday morning, um, but next week actually uh, I have uh, to take Julia to her four-year-old uh, doctor's appointment on Tuesday morning. So not next Tuesday, but the following one, I will start doing this uh, two days a week uh, so that if there are early birds um, or folks uh, in other places, we had one far away. I don't know what time it is. And uh, um, let me go back up so I get the right country name. Um, uh, I want to get the right country name. Was it Uruguay? See, I'm just guessing now. Somebody from from I I know you're watching me scroll. Oh, I lost it. But uh, anyway, people from other parts of the world have another time. So that's Tuesday. All right, one last plug for uh, Stride. Uh, the company I'm currently working for is hiring. Uh, it is in certain locations. Uh, so it is, they're mostly focused on Chicago, New York, and Charlotte, where I am at the moment. So um, at the moment, <laughs> we bought a house. So I'm here. Uh, and so, um, so yes, so if you are in those locations, I will be posting the link. Um, their, their website is just strideNYC.com. I'm sure you can find your way to the careers page from there, but also link directly to that in the notes. So thank you again for coming and thank you for all those uh, helping me uh, figure this out. And uh, I'll probably be doing something different next week. I'll probably be on my older computer. Um, but it's a, it's a good computer. So, all right. Have a, oh, I have new comments. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you, Zara. Thank you very much. So have a good night, everyone, and uh, happy coding. All right. Bye-bye.